pro tip, listen to the song Mastermind by Megadeth. What's up? This is Jay Dennis, the Jay Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. Oh, one more month and I'll be doing this thing for three years, pretty consistently. Did I have a hiatus or two? Sure. Did I need to find myself and uh, figure out my priorities? Yeah. But it always comes back to this. And someday, when my life has even more structure, maybe I'll go back to the better idea that I used to have, where if I had an idea about something I wanted to talk about, I would just write it down or record a quick clip and then record one long continuous episode on Tuesday instead of just doing an intro clip on Tuesday and then clumping all the ones I did throughout the course of the week. But I mean, you guys might listen to this and like the idea, but I don't know. I like the idea of how I originally started this, but my life was a little bit different back then. Uh, I'm a little bit busier now, but it's busy on my own terms. You know what I mean? I'm not busy because I have to be at some scheduled place otherwise I lose my job I mean I have appointments that I set up and you know for the sake of making money and helping people I should probably hold those appointments so that's pretty much it that's pretty much the only time restriction I have is if I book an appointment or a meeting with somebody I should probably hold that meeting right that's how I get clients that's how I get paid and again that's how I help people but no, I have that. I have that freedom. But with that freedom comes more uh, responsibility, more uh, <sighs> tasks, and a need to create more structure in an otherwise uh, chaotic idea. Chaotic idea being an all commission career. Um. But yeah, no. Um, even though this stupid toilet leak that I've been dealing with the past like month and and don't even ask any questions don't even listen to this podcast three years later and ask oh well why did it take you a month the issue's been going ongoing on and off for a month but the past couple days along with the weekend I've been working on trying to like rectify the shit Um, but once this crap is done it won't be uh, taking up any more of my occasional time, but I still block out times throughout the day that can't be negotiated to actually get my stuff done. So working on having a continued consistent standard of excellence, because the truth is much like a team, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. Like if you have a crappy diet, but every other aspect of your life is pretty solid. Guess what? The quality of those other aspects are going to suffer because of your crappy diet. You're never going to reach anywhere near respectable levels of potential if you're letting a certain aspect of your life fall by the wayside. So if I want to be excellent, I have to do everything excellent. I have to go to the gym consistently. I have to wake up early consistently. And... What's gotten more consistent for me this month, January 2019, is reading. This month, I've already read three books. If I continue at this rate, I'll have... uh, I mean, mathematically, it'll be 36, but if I continue at this rate, rate, I'm going to read at least 30 books this year, which is, you know, more than double what I did last year and more than triple what I did the year before. So my consumption of literary devices has gone up and my desire and application of these lessons that I've been picking up, which means I need to go back and reread certain books because now I have more of an application mode. I mean, in the past, and you could probably relate to this, I would read you know, books, mostly nonfiction, with applicable practices and exercises and mindsets in them, but... Maybe I wasn't as gung-ho or as uh, intentional about using the stuff. So it's just head knowledge. 
And with all the other stuff that's, you know, being dumped into your head and just constant distractions in the world, you go to the gym, every other freaking TV's on some news station, and they're all meant to provoke some sort of, like, thought or emotion or bias, and uh, that goes for all the main news outlets, regardless of what side you lean on. They gotta get their ratings, they gotta... They gotta get your attention with uh, catching headlines, regardless of context. Regardless of context and nuance. No matter what your beliefs on policies or whatever it is, just do yourself that favor. And don't take stuff so much at face value. Like, you know, try to use a little bit of critical thinking. And I'm not just yelling at you. I'm also yelling at myself occasionally. Use some critical thinking. Don't just be swayed. Even if the headline is the most literal, non-subjective sentence you can think of, like, insert politician you hate here uh, kills 14 baby seals. Um, how much nuance can there be in that? Well, what did he do? Did he, did he kill him with a, with a nail bat or did he kill him with laughter? It's probably not going to be the latter. Um, but yeah, so it's lunchtime right now. I'm just out running a quick errand. And then I'm meeting up with a... Uh, I'm having a meeting with somebody that I met at a networking event. There's just so many outlets of prospecting that I have. And I'm just trying to zero in and do the ones that are effective. And if I'm bored or have a slow week or a slow month, I have other ones that I can fall back on. But basically... For the first couple months of my my career, I created this sick database, and now it's time to act on a lot of it instead of just trying to funnel in more stuff. Like I should be adding more stuff as time goes on, but I need to act on the stuff I already have, aka simplify. I need to simplify, man, and utilize what I've already got instead of adding stuff that I can't get to yet. I do the same thing with material possessions. I do the same thing with uh, notes and other things that I'm taking and writing down. And uh, yeah, it's, it, this, this stuff doesn't get fixed overnight. It's a, it's a process and I've beaten it up pretty hard on this podcast already, or at least in the, you know, the future clips that you're about to hear from the past. But it's all fun. It's all good. If I knew everything in my life, regardless of whether it was good or they were mistakes, was going to lead up to this point, then my lack of regret would already be reaching a deficit. <laughs> the very thing I went through and did and mistakes I made led me, led me to this point then I got no regrets. And, um, again, I know there's people out there that get dealt a, a shittier hand, but there's just something about taking personal responsibility and letting it empower you because what most people, including myself, the biggest mistake they make, we make, is dwelling on the, the circle of uh, concern rather than the circle of influence or control. Like, you're basically too busy worried about things that you can't control versus things you can control. And how you respond to certain situations or economic hardships or, you know, socioeconomic, broken down, horribly run country that disenfranchises certain minority groups and, you know, demographics, it sucks. I can't relate to what you're going through. So it's easy for me to sit here and preach, but the difference between me and what some of these other unenlightened and disingenuous douchebags do is I don't I don't discount your trouble. I don't try to act like I can relate to it. But in the same token, I do try to empower you and say the truth, which is Responsibility is your response 
is how you is your response and ability. Your ability, your your responsibility is your ability to respond to what life throws at you. And even if you have some disadvantages, you are ultimately in control. And it's just a matter of shedding limited mindset beliefs, cultural stupid norms that aren't productive and are meant to keep certain classes of people down. There are people that were in your situation or people that were in worse situations that came out strong. And not everybody's going to achieve that elite level, but you can definitely pull yourself out and lead a much better life. So, just do it! Yo. We're back to basics now. It is Wednesday morning, 7.20. 7.20 in the... Wow, where did that come from? Or was it 7.40? Sorry, I just said 7.20. It reminded me of this radio station I used to hear a lot growing up. I think it was like a classic rock station. They'd be like, 106.5, 7.40 in the... I don't... I don't. I, you see, I don't even know. But that was just some like really deep, deep memory there. Um, but no, it's Wednesday morning, 7.20. And if you listen closely, you can hear some Limp Biscuit in the background. Because I'm playing my iPod. Usually I play music through my phone. But you can't play music through your phone and record a clip at the same time. I was going through some old demos that I recorded between the years of 2012 and 2014. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks how important it is that I release these songs. Um, but let me let me let me get back to that. Um, just left the gym, had a solid chest and shoulder day. I went a little harder on the elliptical so that I could actually sweat balls and get some of the toxins out of my body. Uh, past couple mornings, I've been getting up pretty easily. I like get up on the first alarm at four thirty, and I'm like wide awake. Um, I believe I ended the last podcast by talking about how I just want to cut out all the excess distractions and just put more focus on the higher money-making activities. And, you know, by quitting Uber and Lyft and my bartending job and just focusing on my career, that's definitely made it a lot easier. But now for the extracurriculars, I have all this information coming in all these sources of knowledge and continued education and everything and I feel overwhelmed because I'm in this paid mentorship group and there's all these archives and there's no time constraint to like watch all these things and get caught up and I don't want to spend too much time learning in one sitting instead of acting because there's no knowledge is useless if there's if there's no uh, application And plus, I'm studying for my Series 6 so that I can start getting registered. I can start doing investments and everything. Um, But I was like, you know what? These are all important things. I want to get my money's worth with my paid mentorship program. So if I need to play a little bit of catch-up on these archives and, you know, apply all these lessons. And then at night, at night, uh, study for my Series 6 for at least an hour a day. I'll be golden if I can do that consistently for the next six weeks. So what distractions can I cut out? Basically, YouTube. (laughs) Um, Sometimes I will go a week. I will take a week off from watching the news, anything political, even if there's comedy injected into it. I'll take a week off. And... You know, it's it's like, what's, what's a week going to do? And plus, as I mentioned on the last podcast, I want to do this whole week of no complaints. Not even little baby complaints. I, talk, I, I started trying to do it yesterday. And, you know, I, I failed a couple times. But I was significantly more aware of just, like, the negative energy and, like, just how redundant complaining is. And again... For the most part on this podcast, I complain mainly for comedic purposes. I'm actually a very happy and grateful person. So with that being said, I'm still going to do some podcast clips, but I'm going to 
keep it even more positive. For the sake of making this a more effective week, though, I am going to uh, cease uh, the YouTube videos of like where I watch the news and some other stuff, and because uh, there's just there's just so much stuff happening right now that I doubt anything significant is going to happen in the next week. I'm sure it will. There's always stuff happening. There's always new developments, and uh, you know. It's just the past couple years, there's just been so much crazy stuff going on that when something new... Like, there has to be more crazy stuff to for, to make people forget about all the other crazy stuff. Like, it's it, it's just... It's chaos. It's chaos. But it doesn't greatly affect me. And I'm grateful for that. So, I'm going to use my power to become better and then to share it with other people and teach other people how to be powerful. Because I want to help people. So, eliminating distractions, at some point of the game, I will be financially well off enough to where I could delegate certain tasks to people, because I feel like I spend a lot of time straightening up my house, even though it's not a messy house at all, but I'm straightening up my house, and I'm doing other menial physical tasks that I could pay somebody to do. And by paying somebody like, I don't know, $15, $20 an hour, that frees me up to do my higher money-making activity like the nookie. That is my riff. Well, it's West Borland's riff, but it's my riff. Came to this, whoops, I was early. Um... But yeah, that's my goal. That's my goal that I'm working towards is I'm paying off all my debt. I'm increasing my income and I'm figuring out what areas of my life need to have focus. And I'm shedding all these annoying mindsets and cultural norms where people say like, so what do you do for fun? And I go, what do you mean? I enjoy every aspect of my life. I find my career fun. I I don't need to escape from what I'm doing. Sure, vacations are nice. Cruises are fun. You know, going out of state, seeing families, amazing. But I don't have to do that as an escape. I do that to further enhance my life. I don't work in a career that I hate. And I'm grateful for that. So, again, working on just shaking these cultural norms and mindsets, and these are, th- these are things that I've been typically above average on anyway, but in a state of constant improvement, it only behooves me to keep the gravy train going. Where I can challenge people's thoughts, beliefs, limiting mindsets without being a douche about it, whilst maintaining my power and my pride. And just, you know, figuring out how to be a better communicator and share these thoughts and ideas with you has been paramount to me being better in sales and in life. Because just getting better at sales has translated to so many other aspects of my life. Like the way I perceive and talk to people, it's primarily been positive. Because I don't want to hold on to the negative stuff. I don't want to get bummed out because I got rejected a few times. Because the good news is, much like some people that probably watch me on YouTube or listen to my podcast or whatever, if there's any negativity, there's a high chance they don't know me. So why am I going to carry that around? And I, I bring that up so that you can have the same reflection. Um, so, again, I'm going to be releasing some of these old demos. Uh, again, I think there's roughly six or seven songs that I mainly recorded between the years of 2012 and 2014. Those were the years um, after my old band dissipated and the transition years into uh, Raptor Riot to where I kind of ultimately found my vocal style and my, my sound. Now, there's still some different influences that go into Raptor Riot, but it's mainly a new metal band, and I know my vocal style. 
And if I were to go off and do a, like a totally different sound that was a little more what I did a few years ago or something, more than a few years ago at this point, like earlier this decade, later last decade, then I'd probably give it a different name or something. But for the most part, I've reimagined and rewritten certain things to kind of fit this new narrative, and it's beautiful. So, thank you guys for listening. Um, just kind of take a look at yourself in your day-to-day. Figure out where you're wasting time. It doesn't hurt to kind of track what you're doing every 15, 30 minutes just to kind of see, like, what am I doing? Where would all the time go? I learned what can be uh, what's what's tracked and measured can be is improved upon. If you constantly track and improve, uh, track and uh, measure something, it's improved upon because you're on top of it. So I'm doing that with my time management. I'm doing that with my my complaints and lack thereof. So till next time. Oh, man. It's Sunday, January 27th, 2019. And I was just listening to a Megadeth song called This Was My Life. Bum, 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 bum. It's uh, one of my favorite Megadeth songs. It's from their Countdown to Extinction album. Um, And I literally perceived it in this current state that I'm in of mental fatigue. I was like, wow, this is my life where I'm trying to be productive and efficient. I am being productive and efficient, but I'm working on improving that because I just spent two hours going through like backlogged contacts and activities and tasks and meeting notes and stuff and you know I put a giant dent in it you know there was like a stack of paper in my in my uh my portfolio thing padfolio whatever you want to call it and you know roughly 40 business cards that I just shredded because now all those contacts have digital tasks attached to them. I don't need the physical um, business card anymore because they just keep accumulating. Oh, I'll call this person eventually. There's no, there's no plan. But it's all about consistency, man. Like, if I consistently stayed on top of these tasks and after I did the tasks, I immediately logged them, you know, spend maybe 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day that I'm going to get back, by the way, by acting more swiftly and more consistently on certain things. It's just, it's it hit me like a ton of bricks how valuable my time is and how much I might be wasting because I do get hung up with a lot of distractions and many of them are in my control. So I do work hard. I do make a respectable amount of kashish. But it can be better, and I could be a lot more efficient and therefore be a lot more energized because I'm not getting mentally or physically fatigued. Whew. But it did feel good to clear a lot of that crap out. Um, but I shouldn't have to wait so long for it to accumulate in the first place before I decide, you know what? All these uh, little stacks of paper, all these little uh, mini hoarder episodes that are happening... And my otherwise clean house and office, it's, it's all about consistency. I can't just have one burst of business or one burst of productivity. It's got to be consistent across the board because that creates more even-keeled energy, more grounded energy, and more consistent results. If I just have a really good week out of the month, what happened to the rest of that month? Do I want to have one week where I'm at 100% and three weeks where I'm at 50? Or do I want to have four weeks of 80%? Mathematically, the more consistent one is better and more realistic. Because if I'm at 100% all the time, 
no matter how much I love what I do, I'm going to burn myself out. And I don't believe in burnout. I don't believe in the grind. Like I love what I do. So why would I get burnt out on it? If I was, even if I was working hard. So I'm trying to create a life and a consistent schedule. I'm not just going with the flow everything I do is intentional. All of my prospecting is planned and follow up activity is planned because I don't just talk to somebody most of the time and they want to do something with me right away. A lot of times they require several follow up calls that are on me to do consistently, professionally, and uh, come through for them. Otherwise, my competition or whoever will get to them. If I follow up with somebody more than three times consistently, I'm already ahead of most of the competition because most of the competition will give up after one, after one. And that's, that's not a no, that's uh, I'm not ready right now kind of thing, you know? So it's probably part of the reason why I sound out of breath, but I'm also doing a little bit of housework while I do this here podcast clip. Um, I've just been, again, tracking what I'm doing every 15, 30 minutes to see where I'm wasting time. And certain tasks I'm trying to do faster so that I get, I get more of my time back. I mean, if I do everything fast and everything crazy, then yeah, I'm going to be tired, but there are, there are certain things I can do faster. Like there are certain morning rituals and activities that I do that I could do faster and not just be like lumping around and being slow and lethargic and going like, it's like morning time is prime time for me. So I should be moving faster and it's easier to move faster when you have more energy, you have more energy when you're more physically active and you eat better, all that stuff. So it's like, I have all the tools, ideas and philosophies, practices necessary. I have all the knowledge I need. And that's another big thing is when you mentally bog yourself down with knowledge and everything and you never practice or apply it, you just get into this constant loop of, oh, well, I need to brush up on this. I need to learn that. Instead of practicing. Practicing is the most important thing you can do, even if like you suck at first. Like you have to stumble. There's no mastery without learning, you know? So all this to say, again, Wherever you are in your life, I'm sure there's certain aspects of your life that you'd wish to be uh, a little more efficient in because this life is valuable, man. Like, why just waste all your time? And this doesn't necessarily have to apply to if you have a simple life versus a complex life, uh, your career, whether you have a straightforward career versus a more variable career. This, 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 This can apply to anybody, anybody that wants to be happy. Just take a look at where you feel like you're wasting your life. And if you don't know how to measure that, because another big thing I've been working on as of late is measuring more things. Because whatever's tracked and measured tends to improve. If you're just going with the flow and just, you know, happy duty doing everything, you're just going to stay stagnant or you're going to get worse. That's why if you go to the gym consistently and you track what you're doing, with lifting weights or on, you know, cardio or whatever, it's probably going to improve because you're like looking at the numbers and you're usually end up seeing progress over time if you're consistent enough. So again, tracking what I'm doing every 15 minutes, you do that for like a week or two consistently. And I found, wow, I waste a lot of time talking to people. I don't mean prospecting or friends or family, I just mean like I get distracted and caught up and caught up in conversations that are lasting too long. Like I need to set boundaries and say, Hey, listen, I'm working right now. So I will talk to you later. Like if somebody comes up and talks to me, like whether it's a coworker or somebody like I have to put my foot down respectfully and say, Hey, we'll talk in a bit. I'm working right now. And that's perfectly reasonable. Or Find out it takes me 30 minutes to make and eat breakfast. Like, what? Granted, I do cook a stellar meal. I make this nice scramble with uh, 
tofu, tofu sausage, uh, and uh, hash browns, and it tastes amazing. Put some vegan cheese and some salsa in it. It tastes insane. It tastes hearty. It's beautiful. It's delicious. You get the soft tofu. It's got the same consistency as scrambled eggs. If you scramble it, you can't fuck with it because the the vegan sausage tastes just like regular sausage. So it's like it's like it didn't give up the meat because of the taste. Although funny story, um, I was having a uh, I was I was, at a, I was at a NAFA meeting, which is National Association of insurance and financial advisors. I was at a, a luncheon with an industry legend and uh, the, the meals just started coming out and it was steak, potatoes, and vegetables. So I look over to my colleague and I say, hey, you want my steak? And he's like, yes. Do you want my vegetables? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I haven't had a steak in like at least two years. And, of course, it smelled good, it looked good. I probably could have said, eh, I've earned this one. But it's like, no, I had the discipline to say no. And it didn't hurt. So, um, it's just all about consistency, man. And it's a big thing I'm working on this year. And uh, that's why I'm consistently doing this podcast, even if I feel like, even if I don't feel like doing it. And, like, the clips might not always come out the way I want them to. I'm consistently doing this to lead by example. So, thank you guys for listening. Um, there's plenty more where this came from and, uh, yeah. Hey, good morning. It's a Monday morning, January 28th, 6am, 6am <coughs> and I'm on my way to the gym. I was actually watching some, uh, old unreleased videos that I recorded back in like 2013, 14, and um, <laughs> I'll let you guys notice this for yourself, but I'm going to completely offset that statement and say what I noticed. Um, I sound different. Um, I've said this a lot on this podcast, but I don't have any regrets, and sure, if the older me could go back and tell the younger me some certain tips. Hey, don't don't finance a car. Don't go into student loan debt. You're doing everything right, by the way. You're, you're good. You know, except for the consumer debt thing. And, uh... Just, 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 just keep going. You're, you're, you're good. Just keep going and here's some... Here's some exercises and some tips to be more effective. Because you've, you've already got what it takes. Um, no regrets on what I've done this decade. And the fact that I've learned and I've gotten to where I'm at mentally at 27 is huge. So, yeah, I was just watching these old video clips, and I just, I sound different. I mean, I was a lot newer at talking into a camera. I wasn't doing a podcast for a few years, so I wasn't used to talking out loud and hearing myself. And there's still a lot of practicing that could be had in front of the camera especially since I'm in sales, like me watching myself and uh, being honest with myself and like looking for ticks and uh, other weird things I might do vocally or physically. But yeah, these days I sound more relaxed, believe it or not. <laughs> I sound I sound more relaxed. I speak a little bit slower. My voice has gotten a little bit deeper. And yeah, I just thought that was interesting because, you know, those videos were from like five years ago. And a lot of cool stuff has happened in my life in the last five years. You know, finishing college, meeting, meeting, meeting my wife, getting married. And now, uh, 
lot of other big things are starting to fall into place financially and uh, some things are being made more clear with my music and my media life. Raptor Riot, my J. Dennis music, all that stuff. So, this is kind of like the advantage to uh, tracking. It turns out I've been tracking stuff a long time. And I knew, I knew, I knew it, you know? I was like, even if, even if I never break a hundred subscribers on YouTube, I'm still going to have a legacy. And that's, that's what most people want. Like that's, that's what separates humans from animals is the desire to feel important. That's really where the <clears throat> monkey brain comes in over the reptilian brain. It's humans have a desire to be important. So, no matter how secure I am in myself, everybody wants to leave a legacy. And that's why I think it's kind of messed up that some of these serial killers and some of these uh, mass shooters get a little bit of notoriety. Because it's like, yeah, we need to learn from history and not make these mistakes over and over again, even though we insist on not doing anything about it. Why is why are certain serial killers getting Netflix specials? Were, were some of these people so psychotic that they did they did they even care about legacy or not, or were they just fulfilling some sort of fucked up internal thing? But like, yeah, that that, that stuff was mentioned in the uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People book. Was that most people have good intentions or they just want to leave a legacy but they go about it in an evil way so most people are well intent uh, good intended intent, <laughs> they have good intentions but they just go about things wrong so they either get lumped in the good or the evil category um so yeah I sounded different I'm more relaxed now. I'm happy to observe that because that's what I've been working on for my health. Being more relaxed. Um, so yeah, again, it's Monday. It's been about a week since I started. Like a week of no complaints or anything. And this is what I've taken away from it. I haven't had a perfect week yet. There were a couple times that I relapsed, but my complaining has gone down significantly, and I've become significantly more aware of the big complaints and the little micro complaints that all just fester and add up into a negative personality. So, like last night, I wasn't too fond of the person at the grocery store bagging or not bagging our groceries or just kind of the lack of personality. Like, it's, uh, you know, I try not to be too much of a judgmental person, but I'm not going to lie to you. and say, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that I'm not a judgmental person. I, I'm very judgmental, but I'm aware of it and I, I'm trying to be more understanding of people. But instead of complaining to my wife about it, I just kept it to myself and just kind of just went like, yeah, you know what? You never know. She looked like she was okay, but who knows? So I just let it go and thought to myself, what is voicing this out loud going to accomplish? Is my wife going to laugh because I'm going to make a joke about it? Maybe. But is it, is it still going to spew some venom out into the world? Eh, it's not worth it. Um... So I'm, I'm talking to you about being aware of things. And what I've learned <clears throat> is that there's, 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 there's four stages to uh, competence and incompetence, or the other way around. It starts off as unconscious incompetence, which is where you're just oblivious. 
then there's conscious incompetence, which is where you know you have a shortcoming, but you are you're aware of it now. Next, you have conscious competence, which is where you have to put forth an effort to be better at something. And then there's unconscious competence. So it's like a sandwich. But the uh, unconscious competence is where you become so good and so consistent at certain mindsets and certain practices that you don't even have to think about it anymore. And that's what I'm working on achieving right now with the no complaining, the tracking my shit, the uh, going to the gym. Like, Like that month, I think it was September last year, where... I went to the gym every single day of the month and I didn't go heavy on the weights every day, but I, I went to the gym every single day and it was unconscious. I didn't think about it. I just went and I'm working on doing that again because it's not hard to fall back into your old ways. So that's a big part of what I'm doing right now. It's creating better habits that are more consistent and uh that's what this whole podcast has been about right now i mean i don't know what the the intro tuesday clip is going to be about but as of these last few clips it's all been about self-development and everything and you know i hope you guys take something away from this this is my way of giving back and sharing you know that the best thing you can do with knowledge is to apply it but also to share it so you know, and again, when there's only so much you can do to give back financially or be generous in that realm, the other thing you can do is <clears throat> have a podcast where you uh, shoot the breeze and uh, share this stuff. So, thank you guys for listening and uh, subscribe. Uh, go to RaptorRide.BankKid.com to download the Sabotage GP and uh, check out the new single Broke Ass. Peace.